gaming whales, hard pity, suffering sales, war on pretty, doctor disrespect, minor texting, did E.R. Kelly or was it more of an Epstein, immigrants positive, HIV, just another virtue, signal for Sony, hiring a non-white trans knife expert, dustborn concord, more self inserts, Clint lock, sweet baby kiss of death done, doing awakening, body type one, rockstar talent, keeps on leaving, dem titties better be hoeing and heaving, brace for pissy, Hogwarts haters from software caters to menstruators. Rocksteady wrote their own name in the death note. Now gamers with their wallets vote. Kill this man, but sold to each doctor's more propaganda. What a shock. Julian Assange finally walks free. AI in your Wi Fi, high 5G. Pixels, polygons, feminine shapes. Pander and lecture, nerf escapes. First descendant with a gotcha abuse. Dice roll shitter with a one time use. Laura Croft's a new survivor. Shift up cross with Dave the Diver. Zenless zero sexy waifu sensor titty is a big no can do western gaming bout to go night night woke pussy loose sideways pussy tight tackle light pulling a rachel zegler pay unequal based on gender hello beta testers like and subscribe to join over 96,500 beta testers and allow me to remind you that a crime punishable by a fine is legal for a price. Tricking you into fighting one another is exactly how they keep some audiences nice and poor. Hogwarts and Pal World succeeded because they didn't take the Disney quote, we only hire specific races approach and chose not to spit in the faces of the fans. The projects I highlight in this video, I believe, will compete and raise the bar. Release your personal feelings and remember how many zombies are still playing games like Overwatch and Destiny 2 today, in no particular order. Here are some of the games I believe will inspire, elevate, or push boundaries in a stagnating gaming space. Number 10. The First Descendant As beautiful as the mesmerizing bubble butts of the attractive women that signal to all gamers that this couldn't possibly be one of them woke western games, I played one beta ago and the grappling hook was finicky, the patrol zones were kind of empty, but the class diversity and the mods that of course invite Warframe comparisons really made me want to get up in the titty crease that is this hopefully satisfactory looter shooter. What puts First Descendant on most of our plates is that it's free. <laughs> so I recommend any interested give it a try, but I warn you, make sure the game earns your money before spending it. A reminder, this is a Nexon game, and their history with MapleStory saw them reduce drop rates down to zero. Look that up. Nexon merely paid some fines equal to sums that they could probably make inside a minute, and that was that. I say that to say that in betas for the First Descendant, they tried to implement a gotcha system for shaders. For colors? So that even after you gathered materials, you couldn't even be guaranteed the color that you wanted. And if that wasn't bad enough, in true greedy destiny fashion, they were one-time use. The devs are well aware that this is an unpopular change and vocal players are the only thing that's going to get the response that they inevitably got because they're claiming that they're going to make those changes, but I doubt they'll make it into launch. So I'm sure they'll hoover up whomever gets in gear and has to have it now. You know what I mean? A game with boys and girls that can actually be pretty. I don't think it has much to worry about, but, uh, you know. You can be egregious in other ways. Sell some Stellar Blade skins, and you'll have all the money you want, First Descendant. You come back and tell me on this video, like a big titty beta tester, did it raise the bar? Number 9. Zenless Zone Zero, but for all the wrong reasons. Zenless has this spot, because I believe it will change gaming. It's just... It, it's going to change it while answering the question, can Hoyoverse keep getting away with this? Honkai Impact is one thing, Genshin deserves its acclaim, quality product, but Honkai Star Rail, Zenless Zone Zero, 
Okay, I guess that's what big money is, and Jiggle Physics and Big Titty Pretty Waifu games make so much that they can turn these games out in a fraction of the time that it takes all these other losers to fail developing their feminist bullcrap. So, I guess most would buy that for a dollar. As I'm playing through Wuthering Waves, I'm getting a clear evolution and raised bar from what I've seen of the combat in that gotcha. It's honestly everything I wish one of my corny superhero games would have been by this point. Flashy, fluid moves give combat that polish. The forte abilities that reward timing unironically alter the flow of combat <laughs> to take the musical themes tied into that game and give the rhythm of rotation real punch. Attacks, heavy skills, echo abilities, that's what they call their Pokemon in that game. Forte, intro, outro, parries, dodges, air grappling hook for plunging attacks in the middle of the fight. It's really the kind of thing that I almost forget the amount of moves that I have. I'd expect this in a fighting game, not so much this gotcha. The music, the voice acting, the story in Wuwa are all irrelevant as far as I'm concerned, but the combat was rewarding. And I loved exploring where I found the... Blah, who cares? You know what I mean? What that game represents is a raised bar. Wuthering Waves guarantees the hero on the banner on your second 5-star pull if you miss your first 50-50. For people who don't speak this nerd gotcha waste your money language, this is slightly less egregious than Genshin Impact manages. And I guess even slightly matters. Number 8. Hogwarts Legacy 2. The sequel to 2023's best-selling game has earned the carpet that I'm rolling out for it. I'm a Harry Potter fan, and I can tell you that the castle came correct. The Room of Requirement granting a scratch for the decoration and magical animal itch goes further with girls and autists than you could possibly imagine. This would have been perfect on its own. Impactful on its own. But I think the combat did enough, the story provided the class experience, some dueling, sword into your house, choose your wand, brew some potions, fly on your broom, bow to hippogriff, have some movie moments, you know, it hit all the right beats. It didn't insult the audience, it didn't reinvent the wheel and lecture them about what they should like, instead of the old. It did service, instead of denying it, the food wasn't burnt. Major criticism typically revolves around how it's mediocre and it wasn't pushing boundaries and it didn't do enough, but when woke journalists are pausing their important dildo reviews to give Hogwarts Legacy a 1 out of 10, and Jeffina Kilina is whipped, <laughs> too whipped to even mention Hogwarts Legacy at his advertisement show, lest his jury of sugary baby pussy cringe activists Exile him. You're not an ally, Video Game Awards man. Wrap it up. Oh my god, they use the Uno reverse card on wrap it up ability. All the devs aggroed. Jeff's house, Jeff's rules. Dorito Pope buff, activate. All incoming attacks have a 40% chance to stun because of his popular puppet buff. Dumbass. I mentioned before that I was worried that Warner Brothers, in their infinite wisdom, decided to put the ESG squad wearing Rocksteady's skin to work on Hogwarts Legacy after the flop that was the piss-soaked Sushi Squad game. Multiplayer witch and wizard game. I'd play that, man. I'm, you know, call me part of the minorities, my fellow black people. They can make some real money off cosmetics if they let people be sexy too. Add some Quidditch, dust off the Nemesis system. I haven't seen that since Shadow of War. Warner shit the bed with monetization back then too. Had to walk her back. Why? Because there were more Kyles in gaming then. Now they know how to get ya. Wonder Wokeman. Can't wait to see the huge jaw that they put on the ugly entity for a modern audience they're going to be calling a woman in that game. Only bar they're going to be raising is the huge jaw masculine man you're calling a woman polygons bar. Yeah, that's right. And the Asian game profits will go up, up, up while the Western studios go, mm, they're shutting us down again. Mm, mm. It's just not very Ferengi of you guys. Number seven, Kingmakers. Thank you, developer, 
for allowing me the opportunity to say what I feel best describes a game that people want to play. And it's the phrase, is this real? Yes, I want to play it. So badly a part of me doubts what I'm seeing is, is it's real. It's too good to be true. You know what I mean? I think I speak for many when I say when Power World was first shown, you know, I, a lot of us were kind of like, get this shit the hell out. This is a joke. You know what I mean? The sad worker pals on assembly line really made me laugh. I was like, come on, man. Fun like this doesn't exist in video games anymore. It's been robbed of identity. They've just plucked that on out, you know? Hmm? To make it all Disney? To, to sanitize it on down? Make it fit through their cookie cutter mold? Diversity! You know what I mean? I'm black and I think this is whack. So when I look at this focused and aware of what it is thing, I, I think, damn, you know, I, I'd play that in a heartbeat. I'm sure it's going to be reasonably priced. And what can we ask for? Like women sizing up a potential sexual candidate, gamers can gauge at a glance from gameplay whether or not something is worth our time or not. A fact slop pushers are well aware of, and it's part of why they waste so much time deceiving with CGI trailers. But tech has caught up, so gameplay can match the flashy and insane spectacle limited only by the imagination of the twerps making it. Sure, time is an issue. Sure, you're under pressure. But sometimes, y'all don't need to take it so far that all the women gotta be ugly. So, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get sympathy out of assholes like me. But before I continue, you don't have to imagine how restrictions like these ruin an entire game. When you're reminded how visually appealing and fun some of the stuff can look at a glance, the whiplash might break your neck when you realize what they've deliberately been avoiding the inclusion of. Real inclusive, right? Number six, Chrono Odyssey. Look at this game. Looks amazing, right? All I would wager this motherfucker has to do is be as impressive as what it presents. All it has to do is play the way it looks. And even if it's only a month or two that people enjoy the asses. I mean, assets. The asses will be in seats. Drop your suggestions below in case this doesn't seem like a reasonable inclusion and you have a, a bunch of different suggestions for games that are really going to raise the bar. You know, make it to the end of this at the very least though, right? I'm excited about people just having something to play, even if it doesn't last, because I think if a lot of these can just stick the landing, it'll be a breath of fresh air and the competition will be healthy. Number 5. Project Mugen. If it were up to me, there'd be a multiplayer Marvel Ultimate Alliance with heroes as fleshed out as Spider-Man's gameplay, but d Insomniac developers would rather slice out Tony Todd Venom for Mary Jane and virtue signaling, so Project Mugen looks to be another amusing amalgam of games that'll catch people's attention and show people if it's open world or combat can innovate in ways they haven't seen. On the amalgam note, I feel inclined to remind current and future modders and developers that inspiration doesn't need to be complicated. Batman Arkham's combat and Spider-Man swinging were enough for some people to familiarize themselves with how engines worked. If less wheels get reinvented, we might see some actual competition by way of genuine diversity. Instead of pandering? <laughs> As senile as PlayStation and Xbox seem to be about pretty women, this is not an issue that Nintendo would ever have to worry about. They don't break what doesn't need fixing. Number four is shared by Crimson Desert and Doke V. Pearl Abyss is a name Black Desert Online players would know, and I hear it for its reputation for beautiful characters. When I first saw Doke V, it was everything I believed Pokemon would someday evolve into, but never did. After hilariously little news for literal years, it became clear that until Crimson Desert, Pearl Abyss's other, more pressing project was out the door, Doke V might as well not even exist. I looked up Crimson Desert fully expecting to hate the obstacle in the way of my Pokemon evolution. Uh, that these dimwits were crazy enough to literally put on the back burner because they didn't see the potential and hopefully Pal World has shown them a little bit of what the hell they need to be working on but I have to be honest and say you know this is another one of those games that looks so good that if it just releases and lives up to what it's presenting that I would gladly throw hey I mean what it's 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 not complicated right not for me not for most 
I always thought shiny Pokemon should have a randomized palette to really increase the rarity of an actually good looking one. You know, instead of a Rapidash with blue flames, these are green, and he's, his skin is black. It's almost like as nerds, we often celebrate difference, uniqueness. And then the woke came and tried to make everything the same. Number three is a game that perhaps I'm most excited about. Path of Exile 2. You know, I have the least to say about this game. Maybe the phrase, I'm there. That's all I need to say about this. I'm there. Exactly why you're at the top, Path of Exile. We all saw the same thing in your trailer. And we know you're not compromised. I don't care how many dyed hair bitches you have in your studio, what matters is that they're not making themselves an obstacle to art, to greatness, to a fun experience, to a video game that you're making, instead of something else that everybody else may be a little bit lost on the way to. Thank you for all of your support, by the way. Hopefully I'll have this new computer by the time Path of Exile 2 comes. Uh, either way, I plan to play with you. I told you losers that Miyazaki would patch Elden Ring, so <sighs> that it'd be easier. And this kills the game. Elden Ring, easier. Dinosaur, out of Jurassic Park. I've referred to Woke as things like the messed up wheel on a shopping cart. And I'm not trying to be funny, but the challenge isn't for you to figure it out, beta tester. The challenge is to accept that because things are the opposite of what games journalists say, when an entity from the gamer decided to say that there is no easy mode in Elden Ring, it set in motion the events that would re-establish nature's balance by making the opposite of what they said true. But yeah, Path of Exile. Number two, Azure Promelia. Not ashamed to say I'm genuinely excited about this and hope they nail it. Fun and flair isn't against the rules in most of these Eastern games since they don't bow to DEI's strict anti-human regulations. In Kyle fashion, I won't waste time trying to convince you. I'll just let time pass. This is more for people who like noticing, bouncing, gyrating, jerking, thrusting, stretching, swaying, wiggling, winding, the physics that are a part of human motion. Something as simple as a feminine walk animation has become so offensive to the nut jobs that you'll see something as simple as an idol animation decimate entire games. In the same way modern games exclude and claim it's inclusive, so too do they extract humanity and style from art while claiming they seek realism after enforcing changes that render things uncanny. It is sabotage. Harvest Moon inspired Concerned Ape to Stardew Valley. Mother and Other inspired Toby Fox to Undertale. But what if one of these dyed hair, pierced nose, dimwit jackasses was there to have a big problem and be twiggled with the problem magic experience. I don't think that should be sold. It's not according to my taste, so it shouldn't be for anyone. People will reduce Azure Promelia's X everything to Genshin meets Pokemon, or perhaps more aptly in this era, Genshin meets Power World, but I call it a big step in the conversation of what does and doesn't work for gamers. And rest assured, gaming as we continue into the future is not a one-way street. It is a conversation. Honorary mention, Black Myth Wukong. <laughs> oh my god. It'll continue to receive special attention since it exposes how corrupt, untalented journalists are at promoting woke trash while uniting for made-up outrage. Like sexism at a studio? Oh, how dare they not have more black people in the, in the Asian studio? It looks great. As with the others, uh, if it sticks the landing, that's all it needs to do. 
A while back, some Sims-like game got shut down, and when all the wrong news publications started squawking about it, I knew that it was a bucket of woke. So the next honorary mention is a game called Inzoi. Looks alright. Most of the footage seems to really be suffering in the frame rate department, fighting for its life out here, but we'll see where it grows, because again, if it seems to look the way that it's presenting itself, I think that'll be enough for its target audience. Not a small group of assholes, enough to sustain them. Dinosaurs fighting. You know? Stuff like this you show people and they go, oh, oh shit. Because that's all it needed to be. Not stupid. Fun. Fun can be stupid. But number one on this list, as you all might have guessed, I don't even know if it's like, maybe after time it'll mark it at the bottom. Hopefully it only does that if a bunch of people watch this, so we should be safe. It's not like you guys are liking the video or anything, right? Number one is Grand Theft Auto. It's a series named after a felony, but that won't stop pussies from trying to remove cars or violence or whatever it is because woke people are like a Halo producer who struggles with guns and separating reality from fiction. You know, real ice cream would be better piping hot. Can you put that in a bowl and microwave it for me? That's the type of energy behind the, the scenes in all of these fucking studios with sensitive, stupid losers at removing, extracting the edgy, gritty, harmless fun from the outlet that you and I have known and have set our watch to for decades. And what we use as an outlet to take the edge off is now being pussified so that we can have even less patience and restraint when the intolerant racists demand that we do and speak as they say and say their phrase of the day and bend over for pronoun impregnation. Nah, GTA has lost so many necessary people and has had reports claiming that the fraternity environment that it owes its success to is much more likely a sorority made up of dudes fantasizing about being widow goals. Ooh. Look at me in my lingerie. I love gaming so much I gaslit myself into believing that this game wanted to be successful. Grand Theft Auto 6 needs to survive a decade. It wouldn't dare let an Asian game be more appealing at a glance than it would. Biaku as, and I'll say this really clearly so people understand, people new to this channel come into my chat to tell me about how they feed me into AI to generate more because they want me so bad. Haters live coughing up my pubes because no matter how I inform them that ignoring me is the best way to get less of me, my scrotum is firmly lodged in their mouth. AI copy and pasting code and programming to absolutely copy a full game, a full production, and then tweak it to remove all the ugly, enhance it, remove that boring, uninteresting, and unfun limitations that are imposed artificially because of DEI mandates and egre egregious monetization. That's not the future, that's right now. Many of the images that I made for the internet to pass around, nobody truly understands but me. But this one I love because to explain why this GTA hoe's face is on here is because intelligent writers would make this her ugly duckling phase. If the story is as Bonnie and Clyde as I imagine, I'd hope that this girl has the choice through the story to transform herself, changing her appearance, just like we saw with GTA fucking San Andres, to better suit her profession. Femme fatales are against woke rules because attractive woman caters to the male gaze and apparently it injures people attempting to pass. But from a writing perspective, wouldn't criminals spit in the face of this ugly poor bitch philosophy? Even a man with the right amount of money can put that money into their body to outdo many women. America, the land of plastic surgery, the home of Kim Kardashian, Sydney Sweeney's titties reign supreme, but tiny titty in GTA for playable character and tiny titties in the trailer uh, is how you guys think you're gonna make it a decade because you're unchallenged, right? So when people say that this entity is quote, pretty and fine as if that should be good enough for the best selling game out there. Maybe a woman with access to money who's trying to open as many locked doors as possible 
might eventually make herself look the part so that these doors would spring open without her having to touch them. She could be disarming at a glance, intoxicating, distracting. How relevant, how significant that might be to a criminal from a writing perspective, but don't take it from me. I just go by what my dick tells me. I love big titty beta testers who are just as sick of being unable to represent themselves. And honeys, I can't get enough of hearing from you. Grand Theft Auto 6 will not be a year old when there will be a new GTA clone doing something, refining something, innovating at something to raise the bar better. Woke is burnt food and people have had enough. Normies are not informed, they do not care about the nuance, they just want food that isn't burnt. Sometimes I listen to old radio shows from Grand Theft Auto and think to myself, this probably isn't even allowed on YouTube these days were we to say it in a podcast. How awful, how Saints Row Reboot might this new slop be? Have I missed a bunch and you want to put them down below to inspire me to make another video? Let's hear it in the comment section below. I'm bored. I'm looking for something to play with you guys. Join me in the first Ascendant soon so you can flash me regularly with great high resolution bodies. You know what I mean? Get me a 4K TV to experience it properly. Or a PC. Or morning kisses. Patrons. Beta testers. Thank you for liking and commenting to push this out to more people. And I'll talk and play with you soon. This was a long one.